السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى جل جلاله وعم نواله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وأصحابه نجوم الهدى قادة التقاء أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد ما أصاب من مصيبة إلا بإذن الله ومن يؤمن بالله يهدي قلبه والله بكل شيء عليم صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من نفس كربة من نفس عن مسلم كربة من كرب الدنيا نفس الله عنه كربة من كرب الآخرة ومن ستر على مسلم ستره الله في الدنيا والآخرة والله في عون العبد ما كان العبد في عون أخي رأه تلميذي رحمه الله وصدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم My respected elders, brothers, mothers and sisters Many of us may be aware of the tragedy and disaster that has struck in particularly namely Turkey, Syria and some neighboring areas it is a moment for reflection for you and I and a moment where we turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I quoted before you an ayah of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Having faith in my Creator, my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dictates to me and demands from me that I have this belief that whatever happens in the world, whether it be good or bad, whether I approve it, I, I, I approve of it or not, whether I understand it or not, whether it makes sense to me, whether it makes sense to the world or not, every single thing that happens in the world happens illa bi idnillah with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing ever happens without the will and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, there will be times where you and I may not comprehend and not understand. And that is absolutely fine. That is absolutely fine. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter says, وَمَن يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ وَمَن يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ Whoever has faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, literal translation, whoever, whoever brings iman, whoever has faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to mention the jaza and the reward for a person who has faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I'd like to pause here for a minute and reflect upon this statement, وَمَن يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ So it is a reality that anything that happens in the world happens only with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does not happen without the will. Does not happen without the will. So there's a hadith in uh, Bukhari Sharif, Imam Bukhari rahimahullah has quoted a hadith that during the time of Hudaybiyah, <coughs> one night, one morning, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam led the Fajr Salah. After leading the Fajr Salah, he turned to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and he asked the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, do you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just said? Are you aware of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me right now? And Sahaba radiallahu anhum said, Allah and His Rasul know best, we don't know. So Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there are some people who woke, up, who, who woke up in the morning having faith in me, iman in me. And there are some who woke up in the morning rejecting me. Allahu Akbar. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam is addressing the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Sahaba radiallahu anhu are a little confused, perplexed. So Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam further clarifies. He says that it rained last night. There was heavy rain overnight. Those of you who woke up in the morning and, and who commented, who said, who had belief, who reaffirmed in their hearts that it was with the will, the mercy, and the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it rained, this person woke up with iman and he rejected the, the clouds and the stars. And those of you who woke up in the morning giving logical reasons to the rain happening, there are logical reasons. That's not the point here. There are scientific reasons. There is a nizam, a system, a sabab. There is a, a, a system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has placed in the dunya. Absolutely. This is also the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those who attributed the rain to this nizam, to this system, to the clouds, or to the cycle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that person woke up in the morning this, with, with, with this belief and having brought iman and faith upon the clouds and upon the stars. 
So everything, everything happens. Our iman, our belief is that it happens with, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we move for, moving forward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ A person who has this yaqeen, a person who has this conviction, who's convinced that this is the case, this is the reality, that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes whatever happens to happen in the world. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَهْدِ قَلْبَ يَهْدِ قَلْبَ there are some things that a person needs to do in order to attain, attain this reward. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever has this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide his or her heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide his or her heart. Let's, deep, let, let's, let's, let's dive a little deep into this meaning. When something happens, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demand from us? Besides believing, besides reaffirming that it is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We attribute everything towards Him, of course. But we also take some steps. We also rectify ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ It is my actions, it is your actions that has caused corruption in the world. If our actions were to be rectified, corrected, this corruption or so-called corruption in the world would not exist. These are the sayings of the Mufassirun. From this ayah of the Quran. ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ So Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned signs of Qiyamah. عَلَامَاتُ الْقِيَامَةِ Some were major, some were minor. From the minor signs, there is a particular hadith where Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned 10 to 12 things in there. Approximately 12 things. Where alcohol will become very common and people will start to raise voices in the masajid. The non-deserving will become the leaders. Uh, those who are in, 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 in positions of honor and, and authority are only there due to fear, due to our fear for them. It is due to our fear that we put them in this position. Uh, property will not be taken as amana. There will be no trust left. There are so many signs that Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned. And then after Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi says, when, when you witness these signs, and by Allah, we have witnessed every single one of those signs today. We have witnessed every single one of those signs, and not only witnessed, it is very, very, very visible, very common. Not in certain parts of the world, everywhere around the world. So Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam already prophesied this 14 year, 100 years ago, over 1400 years ago, and he said that when you see this becoming common within the people, then prepare yourselves for natural disasters. Prepare yourselves for earthquakes. Prepare yourselves for tornadoes and tsunamis. These natural disasters will happen due to a result of our actions. Our actions. So the first step we take when we see these kind of disasters, when we see these kind of tragedies happen, is we, 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 we look into ourselves. We try to rectify ourselves. Where are we going wrong? Where am I with my connection with, with my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where have I wronged my creator? Work on myself. Try to rectify myself. And then thereafter, after trying to rectify yourself, we move forward and we try to assist. Of course, we try to assist those who are, in, who, who are in need of help, who are in need of assistance. There was a time when Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam was in Madid al Munawwara. There was a drought in Mecca. The disbelievers of Mecca had so much faith, so much hope in the mercy of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that despite being at war, they sent a message to Muhammad Rasulullah Wasallam in Medina Munawwara for assistance for help. And Nabi Ali Salatu Wasallam assisted and he helped. Another tragedy and another uh, sad fact is that we've become so desensitized to the tragedies of the world due to the fact that we experience them, we hear them, we see them so regularly. So they don't make an effect on us. We, we read about it, we hear about it, we see videos now as well. And we just pass on and we just move on as if nothing has happened at all. A very beautiful narration of Rabbi Ali Salatu Salam. Rabbi Ali Salatu Salam says that Muslims, believers, are like one individual, one body. One body. If one part of the body is hurting, is in pain, the entire body feels that pain. The entire body reacts to the pain of that one organ, one part of the body. And not only does it react to it, a person has an infection, that infection is in the throat, is in the ears, and you know, whatever it may be, in one particular area of the body, but the whole body feels a fever. The whole body 
goes through fever trying to tackle this, this virus or this infection in the body. So the whole body gets together and attacks this disease. Allahu Akbar. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, Believers are like one body. Believers are like one body. If one brother of mine is hurting, whether in this part of the world or another part of the world, all the believers in the world should be having this, this fever. They should be in a state of sickness. And not only in a state of sickness. If the eye is hurting, as I mentioned, the body experiences fever. The body experiences fever because it is tackling this virus. It is tackling the virus. So the pain may be in the throat, the pain may be in the ear, but the effect is in the entire body, and the entire body collectively is working to try to solve this issue, try to solve the problem. The problem is within ourselves, within our brothers and sisters. It is only befitting, it is only right that we come to the, in, into the assistance of our brothers and sisters. I quoted a hadith in the beginning, in the khutbah that I recited. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, Whosoever removes a difficulty from the difficulties of this world, from a Muslim, from a believer, from a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the difficulties and the troubles and the musibah of the hereafter from this individual. The scholars of hadith, they, they, they pause a little bit and they pull a point out. And understand this, my brothers and sisters. Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam says, whoever removes the difficulty in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not say that he will, he will remove the difficulty of that individual in this world. The reward of this is so great, the reward of this is so great, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to reserve this reward for you and I for the hereafter. Not for this world, rather for the hereafter. We, we have re the rewards mentioned for different different actions. The month of Ramadan is coming up, we will hear about fasting. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned rewards for salah. 25 times, 27 times, and Wallahu yudha'ifu li man yasha'u wa matu ta'if for whomsoever you wishes. A person who breaks the fast of an individual, this will be the reward. A person who performs this many sunnah prayers or extra additional nawafil and day. Banallahu lahu baytan fil jannah. So many rewards are mentioned. But when it comes to fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as li, fasting is for me. I will reward that individual or I will be the reward of that individual in the hereafter. Has reserved that for the hereafter. You and I will find out in the hereafter because the reward is so great. So great. The disaster, the musibah, the difficulty you and I face in this world is very temporary, my brothers and sisters. It's very temporary. Your trouble will come, your trouble will go. But the trouble of the hereafter is everlasting. If we were to experience that, Allah SWT save us. The trouble of the hereafter is everlasting. So Allah SWT promises you and I, you solve, you help, you assist, you remove a difficulty, calamity, tragedy from a fellow Muslim brother, sister in this world, Allah SWT will remove that for you in the hereafter. Muslim, And whoever conceals the faults, the sins, the wrong, if a believer in this world, Allah SWT not only in the akhirah, but also in this world. Because the honor and the izzah and the, the, the status of a believer is very sacred to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will conceal your faults not only in this world but also in the akhirah, both. Wallahu fi awni al-abd, ma kan al-abd fi awni akhi. I'll conclude with, with one narration. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will address the, his servants and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will complain to his servants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Ya abdi, O my slave, I was sick, you didn't come to visit me. And the slave will be confused just as you and I are right now. And the slave will question, Ya Rabb, O my Allah, you are the one who gives sickness, you are the one who cures. How are you sick? When were you sick? How would I have come to visit you? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, did you, will say, did you not know that so and so servant of mine was sick? You didn't go to visit him. Had you gone to visit him, you would have found me there with him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, O my servant, I was hungry, I asked for food, you didn't feed me. Again, Allah, again the, the, the servant will come to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, I feed you, you are razzaq, you are the one who, 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 who provides, you are the sustainer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Did you not know that so and so servant of mine was hungry? You didn't feed him. Had you fed him, you would have found me there. Again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Oh my servant, I was thirsty, you didn't give me water to drink. Same conversation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, did you not know that so-and-so servant of mine was thirsty, was in need? 
needed your help, needed my help. You didn't go to assist your brother or your sister. Had you gone to assist your brother or your sister, you would have found me there. I conclude with the, with the final aspect of that narration I mentioned in the beginning. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says, Wallahu fi awni al-abd, ma kana al-abdu fi awni akhi. If you and I desire the assistance, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, there's an incident, the lengthy incident of the accusation upon Aisha radiallahu anha. Cut the story short, Abu Bakr radiallahu anha was told by Allah, by, by, by Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you not like to be forgiven? If you would like to be forgiven, you forgive others. This was the, the point that was mentioned to Abu Bakr radiallahu anha. If you would like to be forgiven, forgive others. The concept that we learn from the ahadith, Wallahu fi awni al-abd, ma kana al-abdu fi awni akhi. So long as you and I are in the assistance of my brother, my sister, or any other fellow creation, not only brother, sister, fellow creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi awni al-abd, servant. The, the, those who don't have belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are also the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those who are in the assistance of the creation, so long as I am in the service of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be in assistance of me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help me. In the asra ad dua ijaba the most swift, fast, quick of du'as in terms of acceptance, da'watu ghaib li ghaib, is the dua, is a supplication of a brother behind another brother. You and I, we have brothers and sisters around the world, they don't know we are supplicating for them. But we are praying for them, and this dua is the most swift, the fastest in terms of acceptance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to take steps practically, physically, in trying to assist the brothers and sisters. So let's summarize. Of course, we, we, we turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we seek His forgiveness, we pray for their well-being, and for their recovery, and for their uh, iman to be firm, inshallah. And thereafter, we try to contribute and we try to help out as, as much as possible. Inshallah, the SMA is also taking a step. I will turn over to our respected president, Saab, Hafidhullah. Inshallah, he will, he will uh, share some, some words with us um, as, to this, as to the action that the SMA is taking, inshallah, and how we can also participate in being in the assistance of our brothers and sisters. Jazakumullah wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, alladhi ja'ala as-sadaqa tawasita tassilati wa ta'aruf. ورابطة التماسك والتآلف ووسيلة التحابب والتكاتف فكانت من أقوى دواعي الإنسانية ومن أجل المظاهر الأخوية ومن أسمى المبادي الإنسانية وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله رب الأرض والسماء ورب الخير والنعماء وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله رسول الكرم والسخاء اللهم صل وسلم عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أما بعد فيا أيها الناس قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في سورة البقرة من كلامه الكريم إن تبدو الصدقات فنعماه وإن تخفوها وتؤتوها الفقراء فهو خير لكم إن الصدقة من الصدق فهي تدل على صدق الإيمان وقوته معونة لفقراء المسلمين وحينئذ تبذل الصدقة بنية العطف والرحمة من غير رياء وبنفس طيبة من غير من يبطلها وينفي ثوابها والصدقة من التعامن الأخوي المحمود الذي يفرج به عن أخيه المؤمن كربته ويزيل به عسرته ويدخل به السرور عليه فيجزيه الله أضعافا في الدنيا والآخرة قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من نفس عن مسلم كربة من كرب الدنيا نفس الله عنه كربة من كرب يوم القيامة ومن يسر على معصر في الدنيا يسر الله عليه في الدنيا والآخرة ومن ستر على مسلم في الدنيا ستره الله عليه في الدنيا والآخرة والله في عون العبد ما كان العبد في عون أخيه أيها الأحبة لقد كثر وقوع الزلزال التي تدمر العمران وتهلك الإنسان في تركيا حدث زلزلة عظيمة في تركيا وقد دمر هذا, الزل... هذا في هذا الزلازل مدن بأكملها وهلك فيها ألوف من البشر وشرد فيها مئات الألوف من مساكنهم 
مما تسمعون أخباره وتشاهد الكثير منكم صوره المفزعة التي تعرض على شاشة التلفاز لا شك أن فيه عبرا وعظات لأولي الألباب ودلالة على قدرة الله الباهرة حيث يأذن لهذه الأرض أن تتحرك أو دقائق فينتج عن ذلك هذا الدمار وهذا الهلاك وهذا الرعب لعل الناس يتوبون إلى ربهم ويستغفرون من ذنوبهم وبناحية أخرى أن نتفكر في إخواننا وأخواتنا الذين في ذلك البلك في تركي كيف أحوالهم وكيف مصائبهم الهائلة فعلينا أن نعاونهم بأموالنا بالصدقات لعل الله يبارك لنا ويتقبل منا ويجزينا في الدنيا والآخرة وفقنا الله سبحانه وتعالى لما يحب ويرضى بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات خصوصا على أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى سيدة نساء أهل الجنة فاطمة الزهراء رضي الله تعالى عنها وعلى سيدة شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين رضي الله تعالى عنهما وعلى الستة الباقية من العشرة المبشرة وعلى أمهات المؤمنين وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر الإسلام والمسلمين واخذل من خذل الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل بلاد الإسلام آمنة مطمئنة من كل البليات والآفات ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة 
الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا أنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلة أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلة ولا شفاعة والكافرون هم الظالمون الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان ربي الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغيب فمن يكفو بالطاعة 
الطاغوت ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى لن فصام لها والله سميع عليم الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور والذين كفروا أولياء يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله سيدنا محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تذي قلوبنا بعض إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكينا وأنثانا اللهم من أحييته منا فأحيه على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان يا الله مسك جناهكم وعفرما أمير هداية نصيب فرما اے اللہ قرآن پاک اور حادث رسول پر عمل کی توفیق نصیب فرما یا اللہ مبارک مہینہ شروع ہو گئے ہیں یا اللہ خیر و عافیت کے ساتھ ہمیں رمضان تک پہنچا اور یا اللہ رمضان کے انوار و برکات لوٹنے کی ہمیں توفیق نصیب فرما اے کریم مولا مسلم ممالک میں جو زلزلہ آئے ہوئے ہیں یا اللہ ان سب کی مدد فرما یا اللہ جو جانے اس میں گئی ہیں ان سب کو جنت الفردوس نصیب فرما یا اللہ جو جانے گئی ہیں ان کو جنت الفردوس نصیب فرما اے اللہ جو جانا رہ گئی ہے ان کو نعم البدل عطا فرما یا اللہ جو زخمی ہو گئے ان کو شفا نصیب فرما یا اللہ جو بے گر ہو گئے ان کو گھر نصیب فرما یا اللہ ہم سب کو ان کی مدد کرنے کی توفیق نصیب فرما اور ہمارے لئے اس مدد کو ذریعہ آخرت بنا اے اللہ آپ کی خوشی کا ذریعہ بنا اور زخیرہ آخرت ہمارے لئے اس کو بنا یا اللہ مسلمانوں کو ہر طرح کی مسئیبتوں سے 
آفت سماوی آفت ارضی ہو آفت بری و آفت بحری یہ اللہ سب آفتوں سے سب کی حفاظت فرما یہ اللہ سب کو نیک توفیق نصیب فرما یا اللہ اس سے عبرت رہنے کی اپنی زندگی کو یا اللہ تیری طرف رجوع کرنے کی ہمیں توفیق نصیب فرما یا اللہ ہماری دعاوں کو نبی پاک صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے صدقہ تفیر میں اپنی بارگاہ میں قبول فرما ربنا تقبل منا انکا انت السمیع العلیم وطب علینا انکا انت التواب الرحیم وصل اللہ تعالی علی خیر خلقه سیدنا محمد و آلہ و اصحابہ اجمعین برحمتکا یا رحم الرحیم